Today's apologist claim, transitional fossils have never been found. First off, it's true that transitional forms must exist in order for the theory of evolution to be true. In fact, this is one of the most powerful testable predictions made by the theory that could have falsified it. So is it true that transitional fossils have never been found? Well, one answer is that all fossils are transitional, since all species are in transition between what their ancestors were and what their descendants will become. While that's true, it's kind of a glib, easy answer. What people are looking for when they ask for examples of transitional fossils is some species that is clearly identifiable as being partway between an ancestral and a descendant species. So have any such species been found in the fossil record? In a word, yes. In fact, the first recognized transitional fossil was discovered two years after Darwin published his prediction that transitional forms had to exist. That fossil was Archaeopteryx, which possessed the bony tail, clawed fingers, toothed jaws, and snout characteristic of theropod dinosaurs, as well as the wings, flight feathers, hollow bones, and wishbone characteristic of birds. While it's not likely a direct ancestor of modern birds, it is nevertheless an excellent example of a transitional fossil. Since then, literally thousands of transitional fossils have been found. Especially vexing to creationists, we have discovered numerous transitional fossils in our own human evolutionary line, dating back to a common ancestor we shared with chimpanzees roughly six to seven million years ago. If you line up all those fossils in order by date, you can see the gradual increase in brain size, the flattening of the face, the shrinking of teeth size, improving bipedalism, the increasingly dexterous hands, and the advancing sophistication of culture and technology. But my favorite example of a transitional fossil is Tiktaalik rosea, because it demonstrates the predictive power of evolutionary theory so clearly. Based on the discoveries of 385 million year old lobe-finned fish fossils, like Euthanopteron, and the 365 million year old tetrapods, which are four-legged amphibian ancestors, like Acanthostega, paleontologists predicted that there had to have existed a transitional species somewhere in that window between 365 and 385 million years ago. They knew that the species would possess features found in lobe-finned fishes, such as scales, fins, gills, etc., as well as features possessed by tetrapods, such as a mobile neck, wrist joints, weight-supporting ribs, eyes on top of the head, and so on. And based on the locations where the fossils of lobe-finned fishes and tetrapods were found, the researchers knew this transitional species would have to have lived in an area that is now part of northern Canada. So the researchers traveled to Canada's Ellesmere Island and searched the geological strata dated within that 365 to 385 million year old range. There they found the remains of the 375 million year old Tiktaalik rosea. As predicted, Tiktaalik possessed the scales, fins, and gills of fish, as well as the mobile neck, wrist joints, weight supporting ribs, and eyes on top of the head of tetrapods. It also possessed the limb bones, joints, and ear regions that were somewhere between fish and tetrapod. Having said all that, this does not necessarily mean Tiktaalik was the direct ancestor of all land vertebrates. There are often multiple speciation events associated with new or changing environments, resulting in multiple transitional species, most of which end up going extinct. Couple that with the fact that less than one-tenth of one percent of species are fossilized, and the discovery of ancestral cousins is far more likely than direct ancestors. But whether or not Tiktaalik turns out to be our direct ancestor is irrelevant to whether it is a transitional fossil. What matters here is that scientists were able to use evolutionary theory to predict the existence of a previously unknown transitional species in a particular geographical region 
and in a particular section of the geological record, and then they went out and found it. Such a discovery only makes sense if evolutionary theory is true and transitional fossils exist. Additionally, in 2021, researchers discovered that the mutation of a single gene in a zebrafish caused two new limb bones to appear. The bones were fully integrated into the pectoral fin and included articulating joints and musculature. The result was a nascent lobe fin structure, which was likely the first step, so to speak, in the evolution of limbs capable of supporting tetrapods on land. So fish evolving into land vertebrates may have actually been easier than expected. Creationism, meanwhile, could never have predicted any of this. And, in fact, the existence of Tiktaalik and so many other transitional fossils is evidence against creationism. After all, if all biblical kinds were distinct individual creations, and fish and land vertebrates are different kinds, then the last thing a creationist would ever predict to find is a species like Tiktaalik exactly where evolutionary theory predicted it would exist. So in reality, transitional fossils are powerful evidence for evolutionary theory, and a seriously inconvenient problem for creationism.